Live from San Francisco, California, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering DockerCon 2015. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media, with special thanks to Docker. Now your hosts, Stu Miniman and Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Frick here. We're with theCUBE and we're at DockerCon 2015 in downtown San Francisco. I think under your Babuena Gardens, a long haul walk from uh, the Hilton San Francisco. We're excited to be here. We're joined in this segment by uh, Stu Miniman, who's been getting the lowdown, studying hard, a lot of information, and John uh, Gossman, architect from Microsoft. John, welcome. Thank you. So what do you think? You were here last year, DockerCon 2014? Yeah, it's amazing to see how these things grow. I mean, it's a tiny little company. I remember when Ben first came and visited us last year, and there were four of them. He said, we brought 10% of the company. How many people did you bring? <laughs> yeah. And yet, there's 2,000 people coming to these conferences already. Yeah, so, so John, I mean, with Docker, you know, the buzz around it has been amazing. Uh, there's a huge line behind you of people at the Docker booth getting their t-shirts. I have a few friends in Microsoft that have even said that they've spotted Docker t-shirts inside the company, people wearing them, and it's pretty rare, I understand, for Microsoft people to wear, like, you know, logos that aren't Microsoft, you know, around the campus, so. Well, uh, there, there's a lot of Docker t-shirts, John. Yeah. We've been coming to these conferences now, this is the, the, the third one, and been spreading the love, and the Docker guys, we meet with them regularly, and they always come back and gifts. <laughs> That's awesome. So can you give us a little bit of insight, you know, what you're working on, you're part of the Azure team, is my understanding, right. you know, and how does Docker fit into what, what, what you're building there? Okay, I uh, am an architect in the uh, Azure core team. The Azure core team builds the core uh, network storage and uh, compute services. And so, uh, you know, and then other parts of Azure are built upon the services and software that we, we, we write. And so, Part of that is just getting whatever the customer wants to run on, on Azure, because you can't be a Windows only or a .NET only cloud or a Linux only cloud. Every enterprise has a wide range of software that they want to run, and they want to bring it all. And so we look a lot at what it is that customers are asking for. And for you know well over a year now, one of the biggest types of things that people are very interested in is running Docker. And then internally, also, I like to say that everybody in the industry has been doing containers before containers were cool. So inside our services, inside services like Bing, we've been running container technologies for a long time. There's bits and pieces of Windows, there's a thing called a job object that is basically a container technology. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, when you say a long time, can you quantify, I mean, is this five years, 10 years? Well, the, the job object was introduced into Windows in Vista. Wow. to give you an idea how long, and a bunch of other bits of technology were in, put in at that time. But like most people in the industry, we thought of containers as an advanced topic. This is something that's really fancy and you get a hyper cool kernel engineer and they can work on containers. And what Docker did was say, oh look, there's a really easy to use developer experience here that anybody can use and deploy quickly. And that was what they basically taught the whole industry. So when we saw that, we knew that we wanted that same kind of capability. Uh, our customers are asking it for us, and we wanted it both for Azure uh, and for Windows. So John, was that a point of view from a design decision, or was there a breakthrough technology that enabled them to make it from that which was complex to that which is really easier for a much broader kind of developer ecosystem? So it's my opinion that these breakthroughs that are aesthetic ones, that are design and usability ones, are actually the ones that are rarer and harder to land. And, uh, I, you know, like look at the web browser. I, I was working on a hypermedia system at the time, and when I first saw it, I was like, ah, no big deal. But the key was, is it was so simple to use. And because the technology was already fairly mature, then it just took off. And that's the same sort of thing we're seeing now uh, with Docker, is that the technology, like I say, been people doing since like the order containers are cool, 15 years, all the technology is there, and then the, putting it together and the right combination usability is the key. Yeah, interesting. So people, I think, often discount packaging. Packaging UI is yeah. very, very important. And, and I don't know why we do that, because the industry tends to be revolutionized not by somebody coming up with some incredible algorithm, but by making it really easy to use. Right, right. 
Yeah, John, can, can you give us an update on uh, Microsoft's support of Docker? I, I really thought it was one of the you know really important moments of you know the ecosystem building when Microsoft said, okay, we're going to containerize Windows. It's going to be management compatible uh, with, with what Docker's doing. Uh, you know, when we had the whole you know almost container wars you know broke out over the last kind of six months or so, I, I said, well, this is momentum going forward and. You know, then when we get past that, we'll talk about the, the OCP announcement today, which hopefully gets us past some of that war discussion. Yeah. yeah. So our, our strategy is twofold, and it's uh, completely the same sort of experience that the Docker people wanted and our customers wanted, which one is to bring Docker to Azure, Docker for Linux, Docker for Windows, and then also bring Windows to uh, the Docker ecosystem. So uh, about a year ago, at DockerCon last time, we announced that we had done work to integrate Docker into Azure, so that it make it really easy to launch a VM with Docker in it and launch containers. And we continued to add support uh, for that. So uh, this spring we added the ability to take a Compose file and launch it on Docker uh, very easily. And then um, the other thing we announced last fall was the flip side of this thing, which uh, putting the Docker work onto Windows. And the, the goal there again is just like Docker unifies to some degree the ability to run say a Debian and a CentOS, why shouldn't Windows be the same way if you want? And so we wanted people to be able to, if they're you know want to use containers, but they're using Windows, not to be limited to having to switch to operating systems and vice versa. And so that work is underway. You can see it actually live going into the uh, Docker Engine GitHub repository. Uh, Microsoft Windows kernel and Hyper-V team people, the people you might think would be almost the last people to be working on some sort of open source project that started out on Linux, contributing code into this open source uh, project to unify the the experience. Yeah. All right. As you talk to users, uh, you know, Docker gave their their pitch as to where they fit in the ecosystem, the, the mission statement that they have. You know, can you sum up for us? You know, you know, what are customers asking for? What's the key value? And you know, why is this whole Docker wave so important? So the the key value, I think, like I said earlier, is it's a developer experience. It's very attractive. So you develop on your laptop and then you get kind of this teleport tube where it, it suddenly magically shows up on the cloud and on any cloud. And it can uh, run on tops of all that sort of So the, the, the ease of use of the experience is the key reason that it's taken off. But the second part is, as I alluded to earlier, we, the, you know, the operating system elitists, have known for a long time that containers are a good way to run things at high density and like that. So even though right now developers are just starting out with small clusters and uh, putting an application into a container and then uploading the cloud, they know that long term they're going to get these other benefits in cogs and density and 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 that sort of stuff. So it's it's a still a you know fairly early thing, but. Uh, that's what we're seeing the interest from for customers. All right, so, so John, last question I have for you. There, there's some that would say that containers lessen my reliance on the operating system. So Microsoft does much more than operating systems. I mean, your cloud platform, you've got lots of applications. You know, where, where do you see that dynamic playing out? So uh, I think Solomon actually gives a really great analogy between how container ecosystem works and the internet works. Where at the top you have large range of different applications. At the bottom you have a lot of different devices. And then there's a narrow waist of the IETF protocols that enable those things to run all these different types of devices. And I think there's a similar lay layering of operating system, hypervisor, container, and then that thing to, that's, that's going to be the narrow waist of uh, how compute works. And uh, and then each of those layers can be optimized, and sometimes you know maybe you don't need the application layer; you just need the you know transport layer or something like that. And that's uh, what's going on. And a lot of the stuff they said today with plumbing fits totally into that. That these you know, lower levels of plumbing, and then there'll be more opinionated layers as you go up. So I don't think operating systems aren't going to go away. I don't believe hypervisors are going to go away. And I know that people are going to use a lot of containers in the future. Excellent. Well, John, nice summary of, uh, of what's going on. Thanks for, for stopping by theCUBE, sharing your insight with us. Uh, you got a busy schedule. Uh, they're, they're giving us the hook. So okay. uh, again, thanks for stopping by. I'm Jeff Frick with Stu Miniman. We are at DockerCon 2015. You're watching theCUBE. We'll be back with our next segment after this short break.
Thanks for watching.